How's it going guys? My name is Carter Sirach. I'm the productive dude here on YouTube. And in today's video, we're getting productive in Miro. I've made a lot of other great full tutorial videos on Miro and you can actually check those out up in the cards if you want to. Uh, I am going to probably just link those if you don't already know a little bit about Miro. But if you do and you just haven't fully grasped the idea of the frames yet, that's what this video is for. I wanna talk about frames in this video and how powerful they can be. Jumping right in, right now I am on a brand new Miro board. I'm just going to name it Frames Example. And this is basically an infinite canvas tool. So if I want to, I can draw. I'm just gonna draw a little stick figure to start just as an example. And then I can zoom out and I can draw a bigger stick figure. I'm actually maxed out right now until I start drawing again. So we'll draw a bigger stick figure. And I can continue to scroll out and I can continue to make this canvas larger and larger and more robust. And we can add to this as we want to with different sticky notes, different drawings and whatnot. Uh, I'm just gonna erase these guys for now. And what I wanna show you is the frame feature. So in order to get to the frame feature, you're just gonna hit F and that's the shortcut. It's gonna pull up all these options down here. So you've got custom, you've got A4, letter, 16 by nine, four by three and one by one. These are all just different sizes. And they also have different shapes for phone, tablet, and browser if you're trying to wireframe a website using Miro. So I'm just gonna grab custom. And what it will do is it's just gonna create a form like this, but I can actually change the size of it if I want to. And up top here, I can change the name of this frame. So I'm gonna call this example frame. Now you can pretty much put anything within a frame. Uh, and if something is within a frame, it's going to um, move along with the frame. So it becomes one object, it almost becomes a group in a way. So I've got a sticky note here. I'm going to place this one on the outside of the frame. I'm gonna call it outside of frame. And we're gonna place another sticky note on the inside. I'm gonna call it inside of frame. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to inherit that sticky note when I move this whole frame around. And then I can always move the sticky note outside of the frame and continue to move the frame around and now this is independent of that frame. So I'm gonna grab both of these sticky notes and I'm gonna place them in the frame in some crazy order. And I'm actually just gonna copy and paste these. I'm gonna copy and paste a bunch of them so I can show you the next feature of frames. So if you're thinking of this frame as like a sub whiteboard, that's really kind of what it is, right? It's, it's uh, one whiteboard and this one is for examples. And then like I could create a whole nother frame over here and this could be for something totally different. So I could call this like frame two. And you can create as many frames as you want in here. Now, once I have all of this information in here and it's kind of scattered around and it's messy and it's all over the place and whatnot, I can actually click on this frame and I can click this little organize grid button. When I hit grid, it's going to just put it in some nice orderly lines for me. And then I can go back to free form if I want to at any point. But that's pretty nice how grid kind of just conforms to whatever you want it to. When I click on it, you'll also see that right now it's just a transparent background as you can see. But if I wanted to, I could change the color of the background as well. And then I could change this one over here if I wanted to as well. Let's just make it gray. Now, one of the things that I really enjoy about these frames is the fact that you can export them as an image. So if I wanted to, instead of taking a picture of my physical whiteboard, which is what I used to do in my old office, if you guys remember, I had a whiteboard in there, I wrote on it every single day, and I would take my phone out at the end of the day and take a picture of it, just so I could solidify it in my camera gallery. The problem with that is it's not digital, it's just like wasteful in my opinion, and it's kind of tedious in a way. Now, if I wanted to, I could create my frame, and then I could right click it, and I can hit export to CSV if I wanna export it and put it in a spreadsheet, or I can hit export as image. And it gives me the option of exporting it as a small, medium, or large JPEG, or I can opt for the vector PDF, which, you know, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer usually to just go with the PDF unless you're gonna embed it in a blog or something like that, then you might wanna go with the JPEG. But I can export it as a PDF. And then we can just give it a name right here. So frames, example, example, frame. Uh, so what it actually is going to default to is it's going to put the board name here So board name and then it's going to put the frame name here So that's like the default naming structure for this 
and then I can save that on my desktop and I can open it as a PDF if I want to. So let's open that up and take a look at it. Now, right now this frame can move all over the place, but let's say I wanted to lock it in place. I could just simply right click it and I could hit lock. And that's going to lock the frame in place so I can't move that around, but I still can move the items within the frame. If I wanted to lock those, I'd have to highlight them and then I'd have to hit lock on those as well. And I did lock these ones here. So as you can see, they aren't able to move when I drag on them, but these ones up here didn't get locked. So they're still movable. I hope this knocked some of the confusion out of using frames in Miro. And I hope that this video was extremely helpful for people who are just getting started with Miro. When I first started out, I think I underutilized frames. And now I put everything in a frame and I try to organize it with a name so that I can export it and I can save it in my Notion notes database. By the way, if you need a better way of keeping track of your notes, definitely check out my Notion database video, my notes database video. I created a video showing you how to compile all of your notes and put them in one place. You can kind of work with these frames in Miro and put them right into your notes database if you wanted to. I'm gonna have that video linked up in the corner somewhere up here so you can check out that notes database. Anyways, again, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it shed some light on how to use Miro more effectively and how to just be more organized with your virtual whiteboards. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Also, before you go, definitely go ahead and subscribe right here if you wanna see more videos like this and check out this video that I suggested for you over here. I'm sure you'll enjoy this one as well if you enjoyed this video about Miro frames. We'll see you in the next one.